All right, in today's video, we're gonna cover five creative transitions that you can use in your next short form video. While I'm gonna demonstrate and break down these five transitions in vertical format, because they were shot primarily natively for Instagram and TikTok, you can still use these transitions in horizontal format as well. You can use these in traditional filmmaking techniques. The concepts remain the same. I'm gonna hop into each of these transitions and lightly explain how I shot it, how I edited it, and sort of the thought process behind each creative process. Let's start off first with the slide. All right, so the slide is basically a series of horizontal movements moving back and forth to highlight specific elements of the model in this case. This is a really easy and simple technique that you can use to highlight certain aspects of a person, of a product, really anything, and it's really simple. The base premises of this transition is you need a few different variations of a consistent movement across the perpendicular plane. So what I mean by that is that you basically want a constant steady motion ending up on your final location that you wanna highlight. A quick tip for this transition, you can actually start filming at the point that you wanna end up focusing on and then move away from that point. And then afterwards you can reverse the clip and then speed ramp it and it'll look totally seamless. That way you don't miss focus and you end up in the spot that you really wanna highlight. The key for this transition is that you wanna kind of plan out the series of motions that you're gonna end up editing. So for this sequence, I started with Cody, I moved left. I ended up on his face, then I moved right to a new scene. We ended up on his shoe and then I moved left again. I ended up in a wider shot and then I ended up speed wrapping again into these completely random irrelevant clone scene. The key here is that between each scene, you speed ramp to a pretty substantial speed over four to five frames. So for instance, in this first one, I went over six frames. I went from 100% all the way up to 450%. And you're gonna go ahead and create your key points here. I've created a whole video on speed ramping itself in general if you wanna go more in depth on this technique. But all you really need to know is that you're basically increasing your speed over four to five frames in this case. And you'll then add a, either a motion blur preset like here. I've added a motion blur preset called RSMB, or you can keyframe a directional blur, just increasing the blur over a few frames. The last step is going ahead and adding some whoosh sound effects to really accentuate and enhance the transition overall. I've just gone ahead and added a whoosh transition on on each of these speed ramps and sort of just layered it. If it felt too strong, what I like to do is add a little low pass that just kind of muffles the sound effect overall and it just makes it feel all a little bit more seamless. The second transition is the kick. Now for this transition, basically what I've gone ahead and done is I've filmed a quick scene of Seidai in this case, acting like he's kicking the camera. And then from that point, we've basically kind of taken the same process of the first slide transition, and we've just speed ramped into a series of similar motions. First, the kicking scene. In this scene, I've shown Seidai kicking the camera, but you don't have to be kicking the camera. You could be pushing the camera away. You just need something that initiates the action or the sort of interactive element of this transition. You could be pushing the camera away, you could be pushing the camera to the side, anything where you're sort of interacting with the camera. It's better to shoot with a wider lens in these situations, which allows you to really accentuate your hand movements, your kicking movements. I used a 10 millimeter f2.8 autofocus lens for this particular video, but you can use any lens that's wide. I would say maybe any lens 24 millimeters and wider works best. Just try out a few different lenses and see what works best for you. If you've just got an iPhone, use a 0.5 lens on that camera and it'll work wonders. The second part of this transition is basically filming multiple variations of the same movement so that later you can go ahead and speed ramp these movements and make a really seamless flow. In this case, I've come around Seide from his left shoulder across his right, and I've just done this three times. The key here is just making sure that you're moving at a very consistent pace throughout each of these clips, and also very similar pace in each of these clips. It just feels a lot more natural, and it's a lot easier to edit. I've gone ahead and done the sort of same speed ramping as the first clip, just increasing the velocity to a terminal velocity. In this case, I think I went more than 500. I was almost at like 1600 speed percentage from 100% up to 1600% and then back down 100% over a few frames. I'm only spacing the speed ramps over, right here you can sell four frames. And again, I'm adding motion blur on top of these speed ramp portions. I've gone ahead and added a free hit preset, which basically gives it that sort of camera shake as Seidai 
kicks the lens to really accentuate this overall feeling. The specific hit preset I used was from a platform called Motion Array, but there are a lot of free ones that you can find on Google, just Google hit preset. To really sell this effect, again, we've added some sound design. We've added a riser in the beginning up until the impact. Then I've used a dramatic whoosh from my sound effects preset pack which is available on my shop. And then I use a deep thud, just using different sound effects to really accentuate what you would feel like would happen when someone really kicks you or kicks the camera. You'd imagine there'd be like a deep kind of like reverberant thud happening when someone kicks the lens. I've also added this high pitch ringing again for my sound effects pack. It gives you that high pitched tone that really sells that sort of like concussion feeling. And I've just added a couple more whooshes at each speed ramp to really complete the effect. If you're a creator, creative, or brand looking at ways to elevate your content, these transitions are a lot of fun. A key part of my process in thinking about these transitions and really figuring out how to incorporate them into my own content is the pre-production or the planning phase. That's where I utilize Notion on a daily basis, the sponsor of today's video. Notion is an all-in-one tool that helps keep you organized from brainstorming to managing projects. It's perfect for creatives, letting you plan and collaborate seamlessly all in one place. The new Notion AI helps you save a lot of time. I use it to help summarize scripts, provide insights, and generate creative ideas using advanced tech like ChatGPT4 to help me get through pre-production even faster. If you're looking to boost your workflow, get started with Notion for free today and unlock the new Notion AI tool for just $10 a month. Check the link in the description below to learn more. Now all this is, is just an interactive match cut. All you need are two sequences of your subject, basically holding the lens. In this case, again, we're using a super wide angle lens. You could use a 0.5 lens in the iPhone. I use the 10 millimeter lens again on this. And basically the subject is just holding the lens. And for each of these scenes, I try to have the subject do the same similar motions. So I think we tried a circular movement. We tried sort of like a Z movement. And the whole point was you want sort of similar movements. So as you cut between each of the scenes, the movement looks pretty seamless and it, it's not too jarring. It would look weird if perhaps Cody was moving to the left and then the next scene, Rika was moving to the right. It wouldn't look as seamless. So you just wanna make sure that your movements are pretty similar. You could do this effect by the subject holding both sides of the lens. You could do this effect with the subject holding the camera, not even showing his fingers. I wanted to accentuate the effect. So I try to position the fingers in the same general area between the two clips so that I wouldn't have to like transform and distort the, the actual footage too much to match up. And finally, you might be able to tell kind of as a theme going on, but I've added a lot of different whoosh effects between the two transitions to really accentuate again, the movement aspect, the interactive aspect. The visual battle is just half the battle. The second half of the battle is really creating an audio experience for your audience to really feel like they're experiencing whatever movement that you're trying to accentuate. A different variation of this is you could actually have like a POV magic arm attached to your camera for a product and then just match cut different locations. It's the same general idea, but instead of holding the actual lens, you're having a product showcase and then you're just match cutting between the different sequences. If you don't wanna do the specific transition between two people, I think this angle is just a really cool creative angle that you can use in your short form content. It's a way to really introduce that interactive element, which does really well on, on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube Shorts, all that. Now, I'm a big fan of the vertigo, AKA the dolly ramp technique. And traditionally, the dolly ramp or the vertigo is done basically as you walk backwards, you zoom in, or as you walk towards your subject, you zoom out. You're basically changing your focal length as you change the distance to your actual subject. And this creates this really cool, like accentuated background sort of crazy effect that looks unreal. You can easily mimic this effect by just changing your scale of your clip as you get closer to your subject. So in this case, I started at 200%. So this actual video is two times zoomed in. And then as you get closer to Cody, I just change that scale down to 100%. And what this does is it creates this really cool dolly effect that's super easy to do. I found out that the best way to sort of accentuate this effect is to use, again, a wide angle lens. In this case, I use, once again, the 10 millimeter lens. You can see I'm, I'm a big fan of it. If you use a wider lens, you can actually get closer to your subject and there's like even crazier distortion, as you can see right here. And again, I've just sped ramped into the next scene. The exact same technique as the first two transitions, but in this one, we're just going straight through Cody. 
To achieve this, all you need to do is just walk at a consistent pace all the way towards your subject. And in this case, you try to walk as close as you can to them. And then afterwards, all you need to do is again, you're gonna start at the beginning of your clip at 200% zoomed in. You're gonna keyframe it out to 100% zoomed in at the end point. Then all you need to do is just speed ramp it in between this part here to really accentuate that zooming effect. And again, just add some whoosh or camera focusing sound effects to really sell the effect. It's a really fun technique. I've done a whole in-depth tutorial on the vertigo effect itself. If you want, you can go ahead and check that out. For socials though, this transition is a lot of fun. And the final effect is a unique take on a traditional transition, which is the match cut. Now for this particular match cut, all I've done is taken two clips, basically the same movement. In the first clip, we have Rico taking off his shirt and passing it in front of the lens. And the second clip, we have Cody doing the exact same thing. All you're basically doing is just cutting in between where the actual shirt passes the lens. And the fun part about this is both clips don't have to be exactly the same. You could be off a little bit, you could have different focal lengths. I think the real key here is making sure that the shirt covers the lens completely in between takes. For this transition in particular, we used a shirt, but you could do this with a wide variety of products, basically passing in front of the lens. You could have people moving their arms in front of the lens, you could have different things sort of covering. All you need is basically the item to 100% cover the lens and you could do a wide variety of different takes. Again, sound design really helps accentuate this transition. If you notice, I just reuse sound effects all the time. For this one, we've got a metallic riser and then we've got that same dramatic whoosh that I use all the time. You can find free sound effects all over the internet, but if you want these particular sound effects, feel free to check out my transition sound effects pack in the description below. So those were five creative transitions that you could use in your next short form video. These transitions, again, you can use in a wide variety of situations. You can twist them and turn them and change them up however you need to. Maybe you're a creator working with a brand or you're a small business or large business working with a specific product and you're looking for ways to introduce cool transitions to really spice up your content. These are just some general ways to introduce a little interactive element to your videos. I'm sure you notice a few trends across all these transitions, the speed ramping, adding some motion blur, and then the sound design. All of these are different ways you can help elevate and keep your videos fun, playful, and enjoyable for your audience. If you like this video, please click the like button. It helps out a lot. If you have any questions or any breakdowns that you'd like to see me cover in the future, please leave them in the comments below. And most importantly, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. It helps out a lot. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in the next one.